The Philippines outlined renewable energy targets in its National Renewable Energy Program for 2020 to 2040. But what factors need to be in place for the Philippines to reach these targets? Why is flexibility in power generation important? I'm Patricia Mirasol, a multimedia producer at Business World. In this episode, I discuss renewable energy in the Philippine and global contexts with Kari Pumnonin, Head of Energy Business of Vartzilla, a power solutions provider for the marine and energy markets. Thank you very much for taking the time for this interview, Mr. Pumnonin. How about we start by having you define the relationship between renewable energy and carbon emissions? Yes, so classically, the energy production uh, has been very much uh, carbon-based industry where the fuels such as coal, oil, and gas have been dominating the the power generation. And and, uh, recently, the last five years or so, we've been seeing a very strong technological development within the renewable uh, technologies such as uh, solar and wind, which have been uh, starting to take over the, the power generation and in this way decarbonize the, the actual uh, electricity uh, production, meaning that less carbon-based fuels and more renewable-based electricity coming from the, those those technologies. And uh, this is a kind of a balance where this renewable uh, energy uh, is being brought to the systems, but as we all understand, the the solar power and the wind are very intermittent and they come and go more or less uh, without any control, and uh, that is one element that puts kind of a challenge to the power systems how to balance this uh, equation. You mentioned decarbonization. More and more companies are attracted to the idea of decarbonizing their business processes. What is the journey of decarbonization like? And what are the challenges of that? The, the challenge is really uh, on, if we look at sort of technically the challenge, it's, it's of course keep on investing on those new, new power uh, generation uh, technologies, but being able to parallel at the same time uh, to keep the power systems uh, stable, meaning that there, there needs to be kind of a balancing element always uh, introduced parallel when this uh, renewable power is being brought, brought into the system. So this is kind of the chicken and egg issue within this power uh, build up and transfer transforming into this uh, future sort of a net zero system where the world is more or less moving at the moment. When you say balancing element, do you mean flexibility in power generation? When we look at this uh, total um, system, how a future power system looks like, uh, it will need to have a very sizable portion of this demand covered by these various renewable sources. Uh, on top of that, there needs to be this so-called balancing elements, and uh, these balancing elements can be done, let's say, within a couple of typical ways. Uh, you can have what what nowadays is quite a lot new technology technologies installed battery energy storage uh, systems. You can utilize those to do kind of a short term. Uh, balancing of the variation in the renewable systems or you need something what is called dispatchable power meaning that it can be uh, sort of um, agile typically gas fired uh, still fossil fuels based uh, power generation uh, or it can be even hydro power if you happen to have that in your in your country available a lot. Can gas be used as a bridge fuel for transitioning to renewable? When these renewable uh, generation technologies are being implemented more and more, uh, these uh, 
And then this uh, so-called dispatchable portion, what you can actually regulate and basically start up whenever you need it. Uh, so at the moment, the most feasible uh, way to do that is actually uh, gas-based generation, natural gas. Uh, of course, gas is as such much better than coal. Uh, and, and for example, our technology is what we are at Vartsila using the engine-based power plants. Uh, so uh, the natural gas is a perfect fuel for this, uh, these balancing purposes. And uh, as natural gas is still easily and, and affordably available, so it is uh, understood that this kind of a transition phase, the next 10 to 20 years, probably the gas will be this uh, balancing uh, fuel to allow more and more of that renewable generation to uh, come into the systems. And and uh, the the anyway, the fact is that the need for this uh, balancing, uh, let's say, support, let if we call it, it gets sort of a less and less, but it, it needs to be there. Suddenly when the wind dies or the, the cloud comes in front of the sun, you know, then there will be very quick changes in generation. And those are the moments when these balancing powers are needed and um, and um, as as uh, as we see, uh, there there will be kind of a next phase coming in uh, in in at some point where this excess of this um, renewable power that will be actually used to do again uh, kind of a renewable fuels as well, for example hydrogen, uh, and then again these these balancing technologies such as our engine power plants we can then again operate them with these renewable fuels which will be coming in a bit in the later stage so that's kind of the path uh, how to how to get there intermediately still to use gas and then a bit later on even the gas will be slowly switching into these uh, renewable fuels which countries are good at flexibility in power generation? If we look, of course, USA, which is uh, a sort of a very, uh, let's say, open power system in terms of market mechanisms and uh, how to operate, meaning that it is very like liberal and it, the power market itself is steering the players into a correct uh, way of building up the new systems and uh, it is truly the cost driven of course and uh, that that is there the the base case and then um, then of course that the, the system is reliable which becomes the, the the key portion that the new system has to be as reliable as today or even even better if we look um, here in Asia so Australia is probably furthest on this um, journey. Uh, Australia is quite lucky with their position in terms of wind power, solar power, all these natural resources are there easily available. They big country, empty space, easily to set up, say, solar panels, etc. And again, there on the background, they have a like a fully open market system where these uh, energy electricity generators and, and distributors are basically doing and dealing with the, with the electricity. So in both these examples, you see that there is a, there is like a liberalized electricity power uh, market mechanism which is a base that this kind of thing really happens automatically so that it's not state driven too much state of course will set up the rules but the idea is that the state should not actually be the one who is kind of dictating 
various players to do, for example, power plants or, or uh, uh, other, other systems. The Philippines has a National Renewable Energy Program for 2020 to 2040. It mentions a target of at least 35% renewable energy share in the power generation mix by 2030 and 50% by 2040. What do you think needs to be done for these targets to be achieved? When looking at Philippines, uh, of course, the, the National Renewable Agency has put their targets, which is a great roadmap to go forward uh, and, and uh, have kind of a track what to do. But there, there are maybe two elements in it which are not perfect yet. The other one is that it's not yet showing like a full roadmap how how to get to this net zero level uh, as you mentioned uh, those in intermediate targets what what are they 35 percent etc uh, when when you look at the today's situation uh, it can it already been seen that actually even those cannot be reached uh, that it's not actually yet on its way to to reach those those targets what what uh, the agency has put there and uh, on top of it uh, for Philippines as, as as we see it would be uh, very very good if the, also the on the governmental level the legislative kind of targets would be implemented and and uh, those targets would be officially put into the into the process and into a kind of a pipeline where and really to start to work against them that would bring it more strongly sort of on the on the sort of table and uh, it would also put more pressure on the on the legislative uh, people there to really try to reach reach the targets but the other area is then that there, there really needs to be a functioning uh, power market system, electricity trading arrangements, which uh, functions effectively. And that then will start to uh, steer the, let's say, the technology choices, the investments into the right right direction. And, uh, you know, Philippines already, there, there are actually already mechanisms they are still relatively new and uh, maybe not uh, working perfectly everywhere. But I think that is now starting to take the um, the industry to the right direction. The and and uh, I would I would say that um, there is probably still a bit like a double uh, some kind of a balancing moment that this market mechanism is already there. But somehow, maybe not everybody is fully trusting it yet, because you still see parallel that uh, actually there, there is most, or let's say not most, but a big, big amount of the electricity trading and, and, and generation is still being, uh, let's say, sold through this kind of a separate power purchase agreements where which is done kind of a long term for a certain company and they can easily run the plant with a relatively uh, secure income. So as long as these kind of uh, mechanisms, these uh, kind of uh, power agreements are being given out to the companies, there is no need or they don't want to move to this more unsecure kind of a situation where you should actually play in the market. What headwinds in the global market do you think will affect the renewable energy sector this year? For instance, how much of an impact will the U.S. presidential elections have in this sector? If we look at the, for example, the U.S. situation and uh, what the current uh, administration has been doing, they they are actually, I would say, quite uh, well uh, Supporting the renewable energy uh, mentally, but in in real terms, still uh, the the U.S. industry and the, the policies are still relatively sort of a super, not super uh, supportive as such. And if 
let's say, Trump administration would come into force, the, the real change is not so drastic as, as people might think today. Flexibility in power generation, which is the ability to adjust power supply to match demand, is a crucial aspect in the country's energy transition goals. A functioning power market system can steer investments in the sector in the right direction, according to Mr. Pumnunin. This has been another episode of B-Side. Subscribe now and enjoy industry insights on Philippine business and beyond.